as you mentioned, I'm one of the co-founders of Niche Website Builders. We were an agency that focuses on helping affiliate website owners and, and marketers improve their websites. Um, we build websites for for clients, and essentially, we are we were aiming to be the hands-off go-to agency for affiliate marketers. You can come to us. Um, we do the keyword research. We have a team of in-house content writers, um, so it's all all based here in the UK. And then we do the the formatting and uploading, and then we have additional services like um, link building and uh, web building services too. Before this, so that company is quite new. Um, we started that company uh, in December, but since then we've grown we've grown really quickly. We've had some good industry recognition. We our, our retention rate is, is insanely high, so our client base is, is growing really quickly. Before that, um, I was just a, a regular affiliate marketer myself. Um, that's kind of how how we got started, me and Mark, with the company. In fact, Mark heard me on a, on another podcast, and I was talking a little bit about my frustrations in outsourcing content and finding good quality writers and that whole space. And Mark was experiencing something very similar, so he reached out. Um, interestingly, me and Mark live about two and a half hours, three hours apart. So, I mean, we've grown this business together, but we've only ever met each other in real life, like three or four times. So Mark heard me on the podcast. He he drove down to Wales. We spent the day together, just kind of getting to know each other and chatting. And we hatched this idea um, to start the business. Uh, and we went from there. But I guess probably start from the beginning just start kind of from how I got into the the space or or how did you want to yeah well before before that what was your your previous gig yeah sure so prior to um, affiliate marketing I've always kind of worked in in digital somehow I worked initially for a um, an ad network it was a very specialized ad network they helped and this is how specialized they helped south um, they, they helped Asian publishers monetize their video traffic their video content on their websites um, so my primary role there was managing their Google ad exchange account uh, setting flow rates for different categories and it was kind of cool getting to see how the tech was built and how an ad network was run and um, and is profitable. And then from there, I left that, that role and I joined a more traditional marketing agency um, and they helped UK universities attract students. So it was uh, postgrad and undergrad students. And I started there as um, as a strategist, basically coming up with ideas for paid campaigns across things like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and that kind of thing. Um, and then quickly progressed to senior strategist where it was a lot more client facing. I would travel to the universities. Um, I would explain the plans. I would explain what kind of audiences we would we would want to reach, how we would reach them, what that messaging would look like, um, and essentially pull together this plan into a, a cohesive you know, plan over 12 months. And then um, we had an advertising operations team that then took that plan and turned it into actual, uh, into the actual campaign and ran the campaign. Got it. How many years did you do the digital marketing stuff? That was about four years, I think, in total there. Okay, so not a super long time. And yeah. So eventually you realized, hey, I kind of want to do some side hustle stuff. And then you got into niche sites somehow or another. So yeah, what was your first exposure to affiliate marketing, niche sites and making money online? Yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've been dabbling with affiliate marketing for, for a long time, like even far as far back as when you could run your, your own self-serve habits on Plenty of Fish. Where you could actually call out attributes of people and, and you know say, um, are you interested in Asian women, for example? Then click our advert and send them off to Asian um, dating sites and things like that. So that was a long time ago when you could do that kind of stuff. And then I was a, a big follower of um, of, of Peerfly and Luke, who who used to run the the blog over at Peerfly, and his blog was great. He used to give lots of information away around uh, paid affiliate marketing, around these kind of dating offers and um, pin submits and email submits. So that was kind of my first exposure. And then I kind of, I, I could never really get that to the point where it was profitable enough to, to make it my full-time role. So that was always kind of like, always felt like I was knocking on the door and trying, but I could never quite crack that. And then while I was working for, for the last agency, 
uh, I decided to, I'd had some money saved up um, and I decided I was going to buy a site from Empire Flippers. And this was um, this was back when you could buy sites when they were down around like the $10,000 mark. I don't think they quite sell them that cheap anymore. Um, and yeah, I had this money there and I thought, right, I'm going to, I'm going to go into this. I have a good exposure and good knowledge of, of SEO from my, from my day job. So I mean, let's do it. So I, I bought a site. I was looking at the numbers before this call actually was 13 and a half thousand dollars is what I paid. It was in a niche I literally knew nothing about. Uh, it's about barbecues and smokers. Um, and we, we don't even, we don't even have smokers in the UK and we just have barbecues. <laughs> so I literally didn't know anything about the niche. And then over the course of the next seven months, I did a lot of technical work on the website. So the website was was quite messy from a technical perspective. The structure of the site wasn't great. Did a lot of work there. And then I spent a lot of time uh, creating new content. And this was before, you know, I figured out how to outsource things and, and make my life easier. I was writing this content myself. I was doing lots of the research. I was very active with that site in the Facebook groups, which is cool because they have a very enthused audience base around like smokers. People are very enthusiastic about, about their smokers. And that was cool because I got in the groups and I really got to know the product and how they talked. I even got a couple of people to actually send me photos of them using their actual smokers, which I could use on the review posts, which were, which were great. And then out of the blue, seven months later, I had a, a, an email asking me if I was interested in selling the site. And initially I thought this is a scam <laughs> because I obviously never had some kind of an email out of the blue before like this but it turned out it wasn't the guy was just doing manual outreach uh, trying to buy sites and um, we talked and we negotiated uh, and I sold the site to, to that guy for for sixty thousand dollars and I was like wow this is great like why am I why am I working a day job when I can do this <laughs> so I asked uh, I asked the agency could I drop down to three days a week um, and I could focus on on this stuff two days and they said no because at that point I was very client facing so I quit <laughs> I just uh, that was it I quit <laughs> uh, which was which was scary um, my wife was a bit uh, you know sh are you sure you're doing the right thing kind of, kind of thing but yeah I mean I haven't looked back since that was kind of my first foray into into this world how long ago was that uh, this was back in 2017 I believe so okay, end so, of 2017, beginning of 2018. Okay, so just about three years. Amazing. And do you have? Do you happen to remember how much money you invested into the site after the purchase amount? Yeah, it wasn't a lot in terms of monetary value. Um, I did almost all of the work myself. It was very time intensive. I was working obviously quite a, a demanding job. So most of my evenings and weekends were spent working on the site, which mainly consisted of writing content. I'm not a natural writer, like writing isn't my natural skill. <laughs> so it was, I think it was a bit more difficult than, than it should have been as well, trying to perfect how to write these, this type of content. So yeah, I, I guess in terms of money, there was very little of actual money involved. I didn't really outsource anything, which is which was probably a good thing because it meant I had to learn everything from the ground up. Okay, so a nominal, uh, you know, maybe a couple hundred bucks max? Yes, yeah. Okay, very cool. And then how much time did you have the site? Uh, for seven months. Seven months. So obviously great turnaround. And what, okay, you sold the site. You have roughly 60K. You pay some taxes, some other stuff. And actually, before I move on to what you did with that money, yeah. how did you sell the site? So I know someone contacted you. You obviously yes. didn't pay broker fees. You worked directly with the individual. So can you tell us about the actual mechanics of like what you shared on the site as far as traffic, revenue? Did you give them access to certain pieces of information? In the transaction, did you use an escrow? What legal documents were drawn up? All the kind of boring stuff, but this is yeah. deep in the weeds. So what did you do? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think I was a little bit naive back then, obviously being the first time. And I've, I've gone through this process many times afterwards and it's looked slightly different, but essentially they're the same things. Um, I always, always use escrow.com as the escrow service. I think there are other providers out there, but I've always I've always used escrow.com. I find them to be 
to be very good. I know that they don't work with with some countries, um, which can be a pain if you're trying to, to buy or sell a site from someone within these countries. And in that instance, depending on the, the, the value of the sale, sometimes it's best to walk away. I've, I've been negotiating with people to buy sites and they can't use escrow and they suggest like paying here. And it's always that, you know, okay, you send me the site first and I'll send you the money. And they say, you send me the money and I'll send you the site. And I mean, just end up walking away because it's just not worth the risk. But so we used escrow. I always give access to, or gave him access to Google Analytics. So read only access to Google Anal- Analytics so they can go in and check the traffic. Um, I mean, they can do something similar by looking in Ahrefs or SEMrush, but I mean, it's not super accurate. I guess the thing they're looking for there is to make sure that there's not just one or two pages that are driving most of the traffic. And they also want to check that the traffic is coming from, you know, predominantly the US or the UK, depending on what the site is. Because they just want to make sure that most of the traffic is organic or, or if it's social, where where is that social traffic coming from and are those accounts included in the sale? But for this sale, it was it was primarily Google, it was primarily the US. Um, it had a nice split of traffic across a number of pages, so there wasn't really uh, there was no real issues there. I can't remember with this one if I just sent screenshots of the, the Amazon accounts, so the um, the earnings, uh, including the tag, so they could see that this was the actual tag that was driving the revenue, or if we actually did a, a video walkthrough. I think we may have done a, like a, a screen share and I did a video walkthrough showing showing the revenue in the Amazon account. And then afterwards, then there was a, I don't remember the, the amount of days, a, a seven or a 14 day inspection period where essentially they funded the escrow account. I sent them the login details and um, pushed the, the domain to them. Uh, and then they get either seven or 14 days to go in and switch out their affiliate tags, ensure that the revenue is, that I promised or that looked that was I stated was making was actually real and was coming through into their Amazon account and that everything looked good on, on their side with analytics. And then once that inspection period is over and they're happy with, with everything, they tell escrow that they've received everything and they're happy. And then escrow releases the funds to, to the seller then, which, which was me. Um, so that whole process, I guess, from start to finish probably took like three or four weeks by the time we kind of, I uh, sent over all the details, they checked them, we then were negotiating on price a little bit, um, and then obviously we had the inspection period. 